As that pivotal meeting takes place, the war in Ukraine continues. The head of NATO has told reporters that China should face consequences for supporting Russia's war in Ukraine if it does not change its ways. Jens Stoltenberg has been visiting Washington, D.C. as Russia shows no sign of easing its attacks. China is propping up uh, Russia's war effort in Ukraine. It's not for NATO to make decisions on sanctions, as that's for individual allies, the European Union and the US, but of course a discussion about what are the consequences for China if they continue to provide support. That's something that goes on uh, uh, among NATO allies. Jens Stoltenberg telling the BBC that China has been sharing technologies that are key for Russia to build missiles against Ukraine. Russia is claiming that its forces have continued attacks against Ukrainian forces in the Donetsk region that have destroyed several ammunition depots. The Ukrainian armed forces saying today over the past 24 hours, 89 combat clashes have occurred at battle lines, but unfortunately, another village in Donetsk has likely fallen into Russian control. Meanwhile, Ukraine has claimed responsibility for an overnight drone attack on a Russian oil facility. No casualties were reported. But since the start of Russia's invasion over two years ago, more than 165,000 people have died. Killings and injuries of civilians have become a daily occurrence. Destruction of vital infrastructure, a daily occurrence. Devastating and reckless. Children shot at. Hospitals bombed. Heavy artillery launched on entire communities. In 2023, data gathered by my office shows the number of civilian deaths in armed conflict soared by 72 percent. Russian President Vladimir Putin said last week that his country is willing to end the war, but only on his terms. Those include the immediate withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from four of its western regions and the assurance that Ukraine will give up on its plans to join NATO.